Welcome back for another live tutorial. Today we are going to draw a suitcase in Procreate. And this is a travel inspired illustration. Um, I am really excited. Actually, I chose this particular piece because um, we have a lot of really exciting travel coming up uh, this year for me and Jeff. And um, one of the biggest things that we're doing is next month, we're going to Mexico to uh, host our first ever art retreat. And I'm so excited about that. So that is like, what, less than a month now, Jeff, I think? It is. Just about a month away. And, and we're just super, super excited. And we're like planning out the little goodie bags that we're going to give all the travelers that are attending. And like, we just had a big meeting about that today and like all the fun stuff we're going to do. So I am just so excited. And we're going to meet a bunch of um, local artisans. We're going to learn about their craft and we're going to take some inspiration and then do some digital art lessons that I'm going to teach. And it's just going to be so much fun. So I thought it'd be fun to do a travel inspired drawing for today and I also have some hand lettering tips um, my tips are like doing really quick and easy hand lettering which we'll do here so that's what we're gonna be doing today but first you guys might have heard the big announcement I wrote a book oh my gosh and I, I'm just it still feels so weird to finally be able to like say that out loud and in public <laughs> because I've been keeping this secret for literally two years um, since like this whole thing was incepted. Um, and, and now I get to tell you about it and I'm so proud of how it turned out. I have my copy in air quotes right here. Da -da 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 -da. Here it is. And there's the back. And I'm just so happy with how it turned out. And I say copy in air quotes because this one is totally blank. This is what's called in the publishing industry, a dummy copy. So it's just like the cover and then blank on the inside because you know, they're still printing them out. We are currently in the pre-sales um, phase. So this is actually a really important phase for authors because pre-sales are kind of how the publishers like gauge how well the book is gonna do. So pre-sales are super, super important. So, really so I don't have a, um, I don't have the like real copy to show you. So I thought I would give you guys some sneak peeks uh, via some really cool mock-ups where I can show you like what some of the inside of this book looks like and then we'll get into our drawing lesson. So my book is called Drawing Digital and it is the complete guide for learning to draw and paint on your iPad and the kind of big difference between this book and maybe a lot of my other courses and content and things like that is that this book is a heavy emphasis on the drawing skills aspect of things. So if you want to, I, I, I kind of like whenever I describe this book to somebody, um, I always talk about, um, you know, if you wanted to learn how to draw, you might go pick up a book and the book might tell you like, okay, grab some sketchbooks and some pencils and do some pencil sketches. And like, I always found that like super boring, <laughs> like doing grayscale pencil sketches um, and like drawing as a skill, I ne it never caught on for me until I got an iPad and I learned about the Procreate app and I learned that I can just jump right into using color right away. Like that's amazing. And all these textures to play with. And it was just so much more interesting than um, pencil sketches. No offense to pencil artists, but um, I just liked it so much more and it really resonated with me. And so this is the book that I made to just teach you those drawing skills and teach you how to, um, the process that you need to draw pretty much anything. And then of course there's lots of digital art skills sprinkled in and lots of art concepts and all kinds of fun stuff. So let me show you kind of a little bit of what we go through. So there's the cover. You guys kind of just saw that. Um, so we start off with like line and shape exercises. This is one of the spreads that has um, lots of little line exercises to really help you work on the control of your hand because that's like a huge skill when you're learning how to draw is how to control your hand and make the lines do what you want it to do. And that's all like muscle memory and practice. And then this is one of the first projects where we do a still life using some construction skills. So learning how to break objects down into basic shapes and 3D forms, and then how to turn those into actual objects. So that's one of the first projects there. Um, then we also, we also cover a lot of different subjects. So we go into plants, flowers. This is from the animals chapter. And this project is, might be one of my favorites. Like you get to play with all the different brushes and like experiment and see what textures look like. And that's a really, really fun project. 
Uh, people, and this, this one right here is such a fun project too because it, I call it like build a character. And you basically get some dice like from a game and you roll the dice and you, I have like lists and you kind of like piece together like what hair color, what they're wearing, what accessories they're holding, and then you get to build your little character and it's a really, really fun project. And then finally, at the end, you get to put it all together to create scenes. So you take all those skills that you learned, like how to draw these different things, and you, you start to put things together to make full scenes. And this is one of the scenes um, that, you, that I show you how to do in the book. And then I do, I just released a video, kind of like a little book trailer about, you know, about the video. I talk about it. I talk a little bit more about what kind of stuff is in the book. So you can check that out right now on YouTube. This is a little thumbnail. It's called I Wrote a Book. And you can watch that too. All right. Um, one more thing before I get to the drawing. I just want to make sure um, to let you guys know that you can pre-order the book right now. It's available for you to pre-order. And like I said, pre-orders are super, super, super important for authors. So if you can, go ahead and order your copy and don't don't wait till it comes out. Just go for it because that's, that's great. <laughs> um, I have links to all the different places that you can order the book um, in the description or you can go to bardobrush.com slash book to learn more. All right, enough book talk. Let's draw. Okay, so let me go ahead and open up Procreate. And we're going to start by creating a new canvas. We're going to tap the plus sign. And we're going to do like one of my favorite sizes. I have a canvas template saved for it. And it's 3,000, or sorry, <clears throat> 3,800 by 2,800 pixels. So if you don't already have a canvas template that is that size, um, you can make one by tapping this little, um, you know, rectangle symbol here and then typing in your resolution and hitting create. But it was uh, 3,800 by 2,800 pixels. If you follow me, I use that size a lot. So I would make a template. So let's go ahead and open it up. Okay, so we are doing a fairly simple illustration. Um, when it comes down to it, we're like really just like breaking it down to those simple shapes. It's a suitcase. It's a re It's a rectangle. That's that's kind of the most of what it is. So we're gonna we're gonna skip the sketching phase and we're just gonna jump right into it. I am gonna just start by setting a background color. So we're gonna go up to the layers menu. We're gonna tap here where it says background color. And I'm gonna do kind of like a, like kind of like a blush color, something nice and light. So I'm over here kind of in the reds and then I'm just choosing like a really light color kind of like a pinkish color like that. And then um, let's go to our brushes. And I'm gonna be using all built-in brushes. You don't need like any, you know, don't need to have bought any brushes or anything like that. We're just gonna use the built-in brushes that are already, that already come with Procreate. So we're gonna start here in the inking set. So go into the inking set and we're gonna choose Studio Pen. This is a great brush that's very like simple, doesn't really have a lot of texture to it, or it doesn't have any texture at all. It's got really smooth edges. So it's great for making these like basic shapes. So go ahead and choose Studio Pen. And then we're gonna go over to our colors and we're gonna set our color. So this is gonna be the color of our suitcase, which is gonna be kind of like a tan, light brown kind of color. So browns are warm colors. So we're gonna be hanging out here in the orange. And then you can kind of just just look here and kind of see what color you want. Maybe I'll make it a little warmer, which is closer to the red. You can always make a swatch on your, whoops, make a swatch on your screen to see if you like the color. I think that that's good. So you can take a peek at my color right there. All right, so we're gonna draw our suitcase. It's just gonna be a big rectangle and, whoops, but we're gonna draw it with kind of rounded corners. So leave a little bit of space at the top for your, you know, the little handle. And then just go ahead and draw like a rectangle with some rounded corners like this. And it's okay if you don't get it perfect, like some of my corners are more round than others. Um, I actually like to use the liquify tool to kind of scooch things into place. Um, so once you draw your rectangle shape, you can go ahead and fill it with color drop. Just drag the circle in the upper right and drop it into your shape like that. And if you have color spilling out everywhere, um, you need to adjust your color drop threshold. So I'll do that one more time. So if you have color spilling out everywhere, just drag the circle in, but when you drop it, don't let go. 
and you'll see this bar across the top and you can slide it back and forth. See if it's too high, it'll spill out everywhere. So just kind of adjust like that. And I kind of don't like this little, where I like overlapped this, um, you know, the end of the brush stroke. So I can just get my eraser tool and kind of erase that. I can tap and hold the eraser tool and that's gonna choose Studio Pen as my eraser. So that's a like quick, quick eraser select um, thing you can do. Or you can just go in and choose it, uh, you know, tap on the eraser tool and choose inking set and choose Studio Pen. And I'm just gonna just smooth that out a little bit. There, doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so like I said, um, if your rectangle isn't quite perfectly imperfect, because we are trying to make like an imperfect style here, but I don't like how like some of these sides are a little more round than others. We can just use the liquify tool to kind of nudge it into place. So we're gonna go up to the actions, or sorry, we're gonna go to the adjustments menu. It's a little magic wand. And then you go down here to liquify. And you wanna be in the push setting. And I have my pressure at like 42%, everything else is turned down. And then the size is kind of what you'll play with a little bit. So I'm gonna start at like 50% or so. And then I'm just gonna pull out these corners to make them a little bit more pointy. I don't, and then I can also like smooth out the edges a little bit. I don't want it to be like super perfect, but I just want it to be, I don't know, a little more uniform. And you can also make the brush size bigger if you wanna like pull the edges out a little bit more. Maybe you want them to be a little like rounded so it's a little like bubbly, cute um, suitcase. So you can kind of play around and nudge things to where you want them to be. I think that looks pretty good. So go ahead and tap the, tap anywhere to get out of that. And now we're gonna go ahead and start adding some details to this. So we're gonna add these little like metal things that are on the sides of the suitcase. Like this is like a vintage-y style suitcase. So let's go up to our layers. We're gonna tap the plus sign to create a new layer. And then we're gonna switch colors to like a gray, kind of like a medium gray like that. And then we're just gonna draw like a rounded shape, kind of like that over the corner, and then connect like that. And do it one more time, whoops, there we go. Do that one more time. And actually make it a little bit bigger than you need to because we're gonna kind of refine this with the eraser tool. So you can make your little corner a little bit bigger than it needs to be, then fill it with color drop. And then just go around to all four corners and just draw these little shapes. Just kind of tracing the edge and then connect with a curved line. It's another way you can do it. Fill it in. I like to turn my, rotate my canvas to get a better angle to work at. Okay. All right, so I mentioned we're gonna kind of clean these up a little bit with the eraser tool. So go over to your eraser tool. Again, you, if you haven't already selected Studio Pen as your eraser, you can tap and hold that eraser tool, but choose Studio Pen. And then I'm just gonna take my eraser and just kind of erase a little bit of this away. And one of the reasons why I like doing it this way is because I get nice pointed corners like that that I wouldn't get if I was just trying to draw it. And then I can also, maybe I'll make my brush size a little bit bigger. I'm at like 38%. So just go around and erase away a little bit of these shapes to get them the shape you want them to be. And again, we're going for a little quirky and imperfect, so it's okay if it's not perfectly perfect. There we go. Okay, just want them to all be like approximately the same size. All right, that's looking pretty good there. And the other thing that I'm gonna put, um, actually I'll come, uh, let's see if I wanna skip right to that. Yeah, I'm gonna do the um, handle of this. Actually, no, I'm gonna come back to the handle because I'm gonna actually go right to the lettering. We'll come back to the handle in a little bit. So now that we've got our little, you know, little sides, whatever these things are called, they're like little protective things so that the suitcase doesn't get dented on the corners, I assume. 
<laughs> we're gonna go ahead and do our lettering now. So let's go up to our layers and we're gonna tap the plus sign to create a new layer. And I'm gonna teach you like my method for doing hand lettering that is like one of the easiest ways to me to do lettering. First, we wanna sketch out our letters and like kind of position them where they want, where we want them to be. So let's go ahead, we'll just use this brush, which, you know, we'll keep using Studio Pen. Um, I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller because I'm just, this is again, this is just a sketch. And we're gonna write our phrase that we wanna add to the suitcase. I'm gonna be doing let's travel. You can do that or you can do something else if you want. Um, I'm gonna do let's in like cursive and then I'm gonna do travel in all caps. So I'll go ahead and just give it a go writing it out. This is not the final version. This is kind of just like getting the positioning right. So let's, and then just write this however, travel. See, I'm overlapping over here because I'm just, again, setting it all up. So once you've written that out, then you can use your selection tool to kind of move everything into position. So you're gonna go over to your selection tool and like maybe I'll draw selection. Whoops, I'm in the rectangle mode. I need to switch to the freehand mode. So switch to freehand and then you can draw a selection around and then um, go over to your transform tool, which is a little arrow. And I actually like to use the freeform transform tool because it lets me kind of like sh um, move things out of proportion. So you can do that. You can switch over to uh, freeform and that lets you like squish things, which I don't normally use this if I'm like transforming any part of my final art, but for doing text, it's helpful because I'm like, oh, I need my letters to be taller. So maybe I'll do that because I don't, yeah, I kind of want them to be tall. Maybe I'll turn this a little bit, a little bit like that. Maybe I'll make the whole thing just a little bit smaller. So you're just kind of like getting things into position. And if you're, and oh, you know what another thing I want to do? Maybe I'll just select part of these. I kind of want it to curve a little bit like that. So I'm going to select some of these letters and just turn them a little bit. Now maybe I'll just select like these last two letters, turn them a little bit. Um, so, you know, you can play around with your word, get it into position as however you want it to be. Um, and you can always um, do it again before you go to the final thing. So if you, you know, if the, it was really, really rough and you kind of want to refine the shape of your letters before you do your final lettering, you can always go up to your layers and just reduce the opacity of this layer you just made and then make a new layer and then write over it again. So if you want to, maybe I want the L to be, oops, like a little higher there and just kind of refine your letters just a little bit. And maybe I'll do that down here. Maybe I want my A to go like that. So I'm just kind of refining them a little bit. This step is optional if you were happy with how they looked the first time but we want this sketch to be what we want, oops, what we want it to be, because this is gonna be a guide for us to make our final letters. Okay, all right, I think I'm good. So now I'm gonna go to my layers. I'm gonna just turn off that first one, you know, my, my first try <laughs> doing the letters. Just hit this little checkbox to turn it off. Then I'm gonna reduce the opacity of this new one. So just tap little N and turn the opacity down. And now we're ready to make our final letters. So I'm going to switch colors first. I'm going to go over to my layer, or sorry, to my, I'm going to go to my colors, and we're going to choose, I'm going to do white for this. And a quick way to choose pure white is to double tap close to white, and it will snap to a pure white value. And now I'm going to choose a different brush. So I'm going to go over to my brushes, and I'm going to go into the calligraphy set. And you're going to want to find the monoline brush. Now, monoline, I'm using monoline because it's always the same width no matter how much pressure you add. So if I want to create block, you know, these kind of blocky letters that all have the same width, it's great for that. But the problem with monoline is, oops, even if, oh, oh, sorry. 
I'll tell you what the problem with monoline is in a second, but we need to create a new layer. Uh, go up to your layers and tap the plus sign. So make sure we have a brand new layer. I forgot that step. So as I was saying, monoline, the problem with it is even at its largest size, I'm at 100%, it's pretty thin. So I'm going to edit the brush settings so that it can, it can get bigger, basically. So I'll undo that. So go into your um, brushes. And I'm just gonna duplicate this monoline brush because you've already done it up here. I'm just gonna duplicate the monoline brush. So I have the original one, but now I'm gonna make my own customized um, brush. So I'm gonna swipe to the left on the brush and choose duplicate. And now yours will probably say monoline too, but I have another copy of it already. So um, on the copy, you're gonna tap it and that's gonna take you into the brush settings. And we're not, we're, don't worry, there's like a lot of really confusing stuff in here. We're only going to change like one thing. So don't freak out. <laughs> Let's go down to properties. So go to properties. And then here where it says maximum size, we're just going to turn that up a bit. Um, I'm at like 215%. I think that should be good, but I'll go back and try it. So I just changed, um, I'm under properties again and I changed the maximum size to 215%. So something around there. If you, if you choose a much a different number than me, then you might use different size brush when you're working, but that's what I'm doing. And now at 100%, look how big that is. Now it can get really big. I don't need it that big, so I'm gonna go ahead and just make it a bit smaller. And I'm gonna test. I still think that's a little bit too big. I didn't need it a lot bigger than the default, but I did need it bigger, so. I think that's good. So I'm at 17%. Again, your size here might be different than mine if you did a different percentage on the maximum size, but eyeball it. Get it, get it about that big. Okay, um, I'm gonna do the word travel first because I think this technique is easier to demonstrate on these capital letters, and then we'll come back to the cursive. So let's start. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually only gonna draw every other letter, and you'll see why in a second. So the, the one thing that you wanna know when we're doing this kind of like quick, easy block letter method is to make your lines longer than they need to be. So on this T, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make it longer than it needs to be. And there, I'm gonna make it longer than it needs to be. Now I'm noticing that it's probably gonna be easier for me to see what I'm doing if I move my like sketch higher. So I'm gonna to go to my layers and I'm gonna find that like the like sketch lettering and I'm just gonna drag that layer above. That way I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Okay. And now I'm gonna do the same thing on the A. I'm gonna start down here. Oops, I'm on the wrong layer. Make sure you're on <laughs> the final lettering layer. And now let's try that again. And now I'm gonna do the A. And again, remember I'm making it longer than it needs to be like that. And then the like cross section longer than it needs to be. I like it to kind of stick off the side like that. So that's what I'm doing there. And now for the E, um, let's do it this way. I'm going to do that part. Let's do that one more time. And then connect that way longer than it needs to be. Okay. So draw the three little parts of your E. So now that I've made this lettering that does not look that great, we're gonna go in with the eraser tool and refine it and make these nice block letters. So go ahead and let's tap and hold the eraser tool to select that monoline brush as our eraser. So we've chosen, we've chosen our, our custom monoline brush as our eraser tool. And all we, all we need to do, actually that's pretty big, I'm gonna go down um, at like, 12% is just chop off the bottom wherever our letter is supposed to end. And now we have these nice like block um, edges or, you know, ends of our letters. So I just chop that off like that and make the letter look like you want it to look. And then I'll do the same for the A. I just kind of erase that away. And this method is just like so much faster and easier than like trying to you know, draw the edges of the letter. You know, you could trace the outside of the letter and fill it in, but this is just like way faster. So go ahead and do all your letters. And you can see why I only did every other letter because if I tried to do every letter, like they would all overlap each other and I'd be erasing stuff I didn't need to. 
On this E, since it's kind of hard to like, I have the hover feature on my on my on this model of iPad. You might not have that unless you have like the M2 one. That's why I can get a little preview of my eraser marks, um, which makes it easy to uh, erase stuff. But if you don't have that, I would just start here and then just like erase all the way across. So you get a nice straight line there. Just try not to erase too much. I'm gonna do the same thing here. Just kind of erase a little bit like that. And then you get nice corners. So there's our first three letters. And now we're gonna do the other letters on a separate layer. That way we know we're not gonna mess up the, la the letters that we already did. So let's go to our layers and create, tap the plus sign to create a new layer. And then now let's draw our R. So I'm gonna just start way up, oh, tap over to my brush tool, start way up here, draw it longer than it needs to be. Oh, this one's pretty tight in here. Um, I might end up moving my A over a little bit, so I'm just gonna draw the R as if this A doesn't exist, because I know it's gonna end up hitting right there. So I might actually move that over in a bit. So go ahead and do your R. And then the V, I do it kind of like this. And I leave a little nub down there at the bottom like that. And it's okay if even if you cross over like that, that's fine too. And then the L is gonna be similar to our E. So make it longer than it needs to be. And then draw that part too, okay? And then just like before, we'll go in with the eraser tool and just kind of clean things up. So erase these ends. This is just like the E where you just kind of erase straight across like that. And it's okay if it takes you a couple tries. There we go. And then I'll erase that. Do the same for the V. And then here at the bottom of the V, I would just like make this straight across wherever these like, like where this little, you know, in part is, I just go straight across right there like that. And then we'll do the R. And then on my R's, I kind of like to leave a little, a little nub on them. You could do it like flat and straight across like that, but I like it little, just a little nub on the top. Makes it more quirky and fun. And now like you can, I mean, obviously that took a while cause I was explaining it to you, but you can kind of get an idea of how quickly that could go um, just by like drawing, erasing, drawing, erasing. It can go really, really quickly. So now if you need to, you can kind of like nudge your letters around and kind of move them around. Like um, I'm gonna move this R over a little bit and then also the T I think. So I'll put the R right there. Then I'll go to my other layer with the T. This is another reason why it's good to have layers or have your letters on different layers. Easier to move, select them and move them around. I think that looks pretty good. All right. So the next thing we're gonna do is the cursive, which um, is actually probably easier than the block letters because it's all connected to each other. Um, but I wanted to make sure you guys learned it here before we went here. So now you might want to do a smaller brush size, maybe. Maybe I'll go a tiny bit smaller. Just depends on how thin you want your letters to look. And we're gonna do the same thing, but anywhere where there's like the end of the letter, like here and here, we're just gonna make those longer than they need to be. So I'll start way over here. Draw my L. T goes way up high. Oops, I'm gonna do that again, I kinda messed it up. So T is gonna go way up high, here at the beginning of the L and here at the end of the letter. All those are gonna go higher than they need to be. Uh, okay, let me try again. Takes practice to be able to do this all in one stroke, but there are parts where you can start and stop your cursive letters, like here at the T, you could stop and start. I didn't get it high enough, <laughs> but it is important, like, it's important to start and stop in specific spots where you won't see the, the seam, so to speak. Like if you stop in the middle of a line and then start again, it's not gonna look very good. And then I'll come back down, trying to make it look seamless. There we go. And then the T, cross my T right there. And now I'm gonna get my eraser tool and just clean it up. Just erase these ends to make them um, a little square shaped. 
You could have curved ends if you want, if you didn't want to do it this way for your cursive, but I kind of like the way that these squared off ends look in the cursive, so. so go ahead and clean that up. Then I also like to like lob the top off of my S's too. That's just a personal choice, but I like the way that it looks. And then we need to add our little comma. So for the comma, we're just gonna draw like a little circle shape and then come down like that. So again, it's just like draw a little circle and then come on down and then get your eraser and erase part of it away. There you go. And now we can turn off our little sketch, which is up here. And you can take a look at your letters. And if you wanna move anything around, you can, but I'm gonna just keep on going. Okay, so um, now that we've got like the most of most of all the basic stuff set up like we still need to do our handle but for the most part you know what let's just we'll go ahead and do the handle so let's use <laughs> we'll use the same layer that has these corner bits on so we'll select that layer with these gray little corner things and we'll use that for our handle um, we're going to switch colors now. Actually, I'm going to start by sampling the brown I've already used. So just use your finger on the screen and select that brown. And now I'm going to choose like a little bit darker, more saturated version of it, which is like going this way. Over here is like the most saturated and then down here is the darkest. So if you go that way, you'll get a little darker and more saturated. I think that's a good color for the handle. And I'm just going to actually use this same monoline brush for this. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. I'm at like 20%, however thick you want your handle to be, make your brush that thick. And then we're actually gonna make the handle in the same way we did the letters. So I'm gonna draw it bigger than I need it to be. Maybe a little higher. So something like that. And I'm gonna move up a tiny bit. So kind of right there. And then I'm gonna get my eraser tool and erase away what I don't need. So much easier than trying to like draw it like that and then fill it in. Okay. So we are gonna do some little like metal connectors to connect the handle to the, um, like how it connects to the suitcase. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna select the same gray that I use for these corner bits. And I'll use it to do that. And I'm gonna actually put these little things on a layer underneath the suitcase. So I'm gonna tap the plus sign to create a new layer. And then I'm gonna move this, this layer below everything else because I want it to be behind the suitcase. So go ahead and move that layer to the bottom. And we're gonna do kind of that same eraser method for these two, but I am gonna make my brush size smaller. So something like that. And I'm gonna draw, maybe a little bit bigger. I'm at 10%. I'm gonna draw like a little metal. This is like a little metal connector piece, <laughs> like the handle hinge. I don't know what you would call this. So I'll draw two lines like that, like right where the handle would connect and then get my eraser and just make them little rectangles, like a little bit bigger than the width of the handle. Something like that. And then I am going to get an even smaller brush size. I'm at like 2% now. And just connect with two little lines like that. So that's our, that's our little handle. And we can even add like little latches to the suitcase in the same way, you know, like the little metal latches. So you can add a little line there, erase a little bit away and that can kind of represent the latch. You can even add a little like, that's like the latch. We're going really, really like simple here, I'm not doing a lot of detail, but that is a little detail that you can add. So we'll do another one there, kind of erase the sides like that, and then add like a little rounded shape to the top, something like that. Cool. All right, so now it's time to add 
some texture and a little little some little details to this. Um, so let's start by adding some texture to our suitcase layer. So we're gonna go to our layers and we're gonna find the layer with the brown suitcase and we're gonna enable alpha lock on this layer. An alpha lock is going to um, lock this shape and we can only draw within that shape. So go ahead and you can, there's two ways that you can do it. You can um, tap the layer and choose alpha lock from the menu or you can take two fingers and swipe to the right. And it's a little hard to see, but there is a checkerboard pattern behind it. And that's, that means that alpha lock is on. So actually, let's go ahead and turn on alpha lock on this layer too, because we're gonna add texture to the one with the little corner pieces and stuff. So you can swipe to the right with two fingers on that. And that one's a little bit easier to see that checkerboard pattern. But make sure you're on the suitcase layer. All right, so let's go ahead and add some texture to this. Let's start by sampling the brown color of the suitcase. And then I'm gonna choose a color that's just a little bit darker and more saturated, just like barely. And you can kinda see, like, you can see like it's just a little bit darker. And now let's also switch brushes too, cause we wanna brush with a lot of texture since we're adding texture. So I'm gonna go over to the brushes and I'm gonna go into the charcoal set. So go to the charcoal set and I'm choosing the Burnt Tree brush. This one has a lot of really fun texture. So Burnt Tree is the brush that I'm using now. And for with this dark color, I'm just gonna, hmm, actually, you know what? Uh, I think I kinda wanna start with the light color and then add the dark color for the texture. So I'm, I'm reversing here a little bit. I'm gonna select this um, brown color again and I'll explain why I'm doing it in this order when I'm done, but I'm gonna select this brown color and I'm gonna choose a little bit lighter and less saturated. So when we're going darker, we're getting uh, darker and, and more saturated. When we're going lighter, we're getting lighter and less saturated. And we'll see how that looks. Yeah, I think that'll be nice. And I'm gonna use this light color to just lightly, kind of here and there all over, just add some all over texture like this. So just add a little bit of texture. I'm doing it kind of sporadically. If you were to do it evenly, you know, it might look something like that, but I'm just doing a little bit here and there. Okay. Now I'm gonna select a darker version of this color and add the dark texture. So I'm gonna find the original color, which is around right there. I'm gonna go darker and more saturated. Maybe even a little bit more darker than that. That's good. And I'm just gonna um, kind of more selectively add this darker texture. So what's oh, my brush size like 26%. I'm gonna add it kind of along the bottom. And again, I'm just using pretty light pressure, like almost my lightest pressure to do this. If I did heavy pressure, it would look very solid like that. So light pressure, and then maybe here along the sides like that. And I'm, so now I can explain why I did it in that order is because I wanted to make the light color kind of some overall texture. And then I wanted to localize this dark texture and just add it in certain places. And I wanted the dark to make like, if I had done it the other way, I'd have like light overlapping the dark and it wouldn't look as good. So that's why I did it in that order. And I also kind of focused it around the edges to kind of give the impression of maybe like, this is the bottom. So maybe there's a shadow down there and these are the edges. Maybe it's more worn and kind of focus it that way. So that's why I did that. And then I also wanna add some texture to my handle. So I'm gonna select the handle color and then get a little bit darker and more saturated color. Oh wait, that's on a different layer. <laughs> okay, so that is actually, I forgot. <laughs> we should switch layers now. So let's go ahead and switch to the layer with the, um, like these edges, these little, whatever. I'm sure they probably have a name. <laughs> I don't know what it is. So go ahead and select that. And um, and we are about to add some texture to the handle. So I'm gonna select the handle color and then get a little bit darker and more saturated version of that. And then for this, I just wanna kinda add some texture to the bottom and that might insinuate a little bit of a shadow and give it just a little bit of dimension. So I'm gonna go even smaller with my brush size. I'm at like 11% and just add some texture to the bottom of it like that. So something like that. 
And then I'm also gonna add a little bit of texture to these, um, these little metal corner pieces. So I'll start by selecting that color. And then I think I'm gonna start with a lighter version of that color. So I'm just gonna choose a slightly lighter version of that same color. Test it out, I think that looks good. And then I'm just gonna, maybe bigger with my brush size, I'm at like 21% now. Just add a little bit of texture kind of to the side of that, like this edge. And then, well I guess this would be like the top, add a little bit of texture to the top of it. And then the same thing here, a little texture to the top and a little texture to the top, like that, okay? And then I'm also gonna add just a little bit of like, almost like an insinuating sort of a shadow. So I'm gonna go into my brushes. I'm actually gonna switch to a different brush. Um, let's do, let's do, I think, which one was I using? Um, let's go to the calligraphy set. So it's the one that the monoline brush was in, calligraphy. And let's choose chalk. I think that one will be good for this. So chalk from the calligraphy set. And then I'm gonna select this, you know, base color and get like a darker version of it, something like that. And then I'm just gonna draw a line kind of along the edge of that, something like that, along the bottom edge of all these pieces. And this is just gonna give it like a little bit of dimension. I'm also gonna do it on the bottom edge of this one and the bottom of this one. So these little metal things now have a little bit of dimension to them. Okay. Now, um, one more little detail to our suitcase before we kind of decorate it a little bit um, are the little stitches that are gonna be um, kind of going down where the buckles are. So for that, we're gonna create a clipping mask. I want you to tap the layer with the suitcase. So the brown, big brown rectangle Create a layer right above that. So top the plus sign to create a new layer. And then we're gonna tap that new layer and we're gonna choose clipping mask. And you'll see a little arrow that points down will appear and the layer is like indented. And that means that whatever I draw on this layer will only show up if it's within this shape of the layer below it. That's what a clipping mask does. So if I draw over here, I'm actually drawing something. You can't tell, I am. <laughs> but I, you can't see it unless it's, within this shape, like that. So I'll undo that. So we're just gonna draw some little stitches with this same chalk brush. I'm actually gonna do them in the same color as the handle. Whenever you can repeat colors in a piece, that helps look, make it look more cohesive. So as you can tell, there's very few colors that I've used so far. So let's start there and then, uh, let's see what brush size I have. I'm at 15% for my brush size. And all I'm gonna do is draw two lines, kind of parallel lines coming down for where the buckle is. So, and I'm not using a ton of pressure here. The more pressure you use, the bigger your stroke will be, see? So I'm using pretty like light pressure to get kind of like um, a thinner line. You can also adjust your brush size if it's easier. So draw two lines kind of coming down from the buckle. And then I wanna make these lines look like stitches. And I could have drawn a line like this, you know, a little dotted line, but I am a little lazy sometimes, so I do it a different way. <laughs> We're gonna just use the eraser tool to kind of make these into um, like dashed lines. So go over to your eraser tool. Um, I still have the mono line brush selected as my eraser, which is fine. And I think that brush size is good. I'm at 12%. And you're just gonna draw or erase little dotted lines to make these look a little bit like stitches. So much faster and easier. So just go ahead and erase in the, you know, semi-uniform. You can, if you make your um, brush size smaller and make these closer together, you can have really thin stitches or, you know, you can adjust how you want it to be. And um, I think I could make my stitches like a tiny bit darker. So I'll just do that really quick. Like it, I feel like they don't stand out enough. So I'm gonna make them a little bit darker. I'm gonna go up to my adjustments menu and I'm gonna go to hue, saturation, brightness. And I'm just gonna make them a little less bright. That's totally optional. You can, you know, this is a good way, this hue, saturation, brightness adjustment is a good way to like tweak the colors um, in your piece. You don't need to do that if you don't want to. 
All right, so that is the whole suitcase. The last thing that I wanted to show you guys or that I wanted to do with you guys was add some fun little travel stickers to it because, you know, it needs some travel stickers. So now we're going to go ahead and do that. And this is, again, this we're doing really, really simple. You could do really detailed travel stickers, put little illustrations on them, but we're keeping it super simple. So I need to create a new layer for this. So I'm just going to tap the plus sign to create a new layer. As long as this layer is above your like a rectangle, suitcase rectangle, you're, you're good to go. So make sure you have a layer above that. And for the brush, I'll just switch back to my monoline brush. Either one will work because these are going to be pretty small. And I'm just going to select a color. I'm just going to start with yellow. We can always change the color, which we'll do in a little bit. And then I'm just going to draw some like generic little rectangle shapes and fill it in. And this one might be like a triangle. They don't have to be perfect because we're going to go in with our eraser tool and make them better. <laughs> um, if it's a circular shape, go ahead and just draw the shape you want it to be because it's a lot easier to draw it than erase to make it the shape you want. So just that one will be like an oval. Um, I'll do that one more time, a little lower. So there's an oval, I'll fill that in. And this one will be like kind of another rectangle, fill it in. And then I'll do like a circle up here. There we go fill that in. And now we're going to use our eraser tool to make these shapes better. So I'm going to go to my eraser tool and this one I'm just going to erase away some of the edges to make it more of a better rectangle shape. And then for this one I'm also going to erase the corners away using the like the circularness of this monoline brush. I just kind of like tapped on the corner and erased away a little notch from it makes it a little bit more decorative and i have since i have that hover feature it actually makes it really easy to see but if you don't um i recommend turning on this brush cursor setting which is found in the preferences under actions menu brush cursor it's it's so useful you can get a preview of like your brush cursor and it's really awesome i always, i have that on it's great um okay let's clean up this triangle make it more pointy just kind of erase a couple to the edges and it'll be a better triangle. <laughs> and then we'll do this one. We're just kind of like getting nice corners. That's kind of the point of this. And these round shapes look good to go. So now that we've kind of like made our shapes, you can start to color them however you want. Um, I'm gonna do some of my favorite colors. I have like a palette that I like and you probably see me use again and again in my work, which is, you know, the colors you're probably about to see right now. But I always like to have a pink. So I'll choose like a nice pink color and then I'll do this one in pink. So I'm just gonna drop pink on that color. Maybe a little lighter. There we go. And then I'll do this one in kind of like a tealy, tealy blue color, maybe something like that. That looks good. This one's gonna be in like a green. I like a warm green, like a limey kind of green. Maybe even more saturated, a little warmer. That looks good. And I'll leave that one yellow. And then I'll do this one in like an orange. Good. So I've just gone around and color dropped different colors onto all my stickers just to add a pop of color to this piece. And now, um, well, actually, there's one more thing I want to do before we add the little designs, and that's on this one right here. I'm going to actually make this one almost look like a stamp. So I'm going to go to my eraser tool. I'm going to go a little smaller with my brush size, and I'm just going to, like, erase little circles out of the side like that. So just a fun way to make the shapes a little more interesting. That's cute. Okay, so now I'm just gonna create one more layer and just add some little very, very simple designs to these stickers. So tap the plus sign to create a new layer above that. We're gonna choose, I'm gonna do these all in white just for cohesiveness, so choose white. And then for the brush, I like the, let's see, I'm gonna go in the sketching set and choose the 6B pencil. 
I, I really like this, you know, as far as built-in brushes go, I like this one for adding details because it's got a lot of texture to it. And then we're just gonna add some little designs. Like you can add a border. Let's see, what's my brush size? I'm at 35%. Just kind of draw a border inside your shape like this. And then write the name of a place that you have been to or that you wanna go to. I'm gonna write Paris. I love Paris. And then I'll go do this one here. I'll just kind of outline it like that, just like I did for the other one. And then this one, um, this one I imagine to be upside down because if I were to have a triangle sticker, it would face the other way, but um, it didn't fit as well in the space facing that way. So <laughs> this sticker is upside down in my brain. So I'm gonna turn it over and write in Cuba another place I've been to that I really, really loved. And then we'll do another outline here. And this one's gonna be India. I've been there too, it's so cool. I loved India. And then um, for this one, I'm just gonna do like a little rectangle in here and Draw like a little palm tree, really simple little palm tree, just like a curved line and then some kind of lines coming off of it. Maybe that one's for Palm Springs. That's another place that I love, a little palm tree. And one more, and since this one is round, I thought it could be like a globe sort of symbol. So I just draw a circle and then a line down the middle and then a couple lines kind of curving out this way. And then a couple lines curving out that way, kind of in between. And then a line across. And then cut that space in half with another line. And then another line, just like that. Super simple little kind of globe icon. And that is the finished piece. I think this, you know, I, you, you, yeah, this one, you learn a lot of really useful skills like, um, you know, the hand lettering tips, using the liquify tool, using the eraser tool to draw is one of my favorite like tricks. <laughs> one of my favorite tools, like I love using the eraser tool to refine my shapes. I think it's a lot easier when you're drawing something to start with, um, with a more simple shape and then kind of like take away from it to make it something more, complex and refined. So that's why I like using the eraser tool. And then we also learned about texturing. We use clipping masks, all kinds of really, really good stuff in this piece. And really quick, I wanted to show you how I animated this. I'm not going to get into the animation, but I did animate it because I thought it would be fun to do. And I've been on a big animation kick lately. I just re released a, an animation course. Um, let me open it. Let's see. Let's do this one. So let me play that. Da, da, da. So there's the animated version. I just kind of um, went backwards and like erased the things or took them away. And then I, anyways, it, yeah. <laughs> so I made the little things appear by like erasing them and then kind of like putting it, doing it in reverse order. Um, and then made the little let's travel shake, shake and it turned out really cute. So yeah, I just did release um, a course on animation where I do like really simple little animations like this that can just take um, a piece to kind of the next level and make it a little bit more fun, a little bit more interesting. Wow, okay, you guys. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was a fun one. I really, really enjoyed teaching you that one. Let me head over here. Um, so I am so excited to see what you guys have made. Um, so please, please do tag me if you're sharing your work on Instagram, um, or elsewhere. Um, you can use, I, I made up, uh, I made up a hashtag for you, <laughs> BB suitcase. So if you use that hashtag, um, everybody can see each other's work and you can go and see what other people have done and I can go and see all of your work. You can of course tag Bardo Brush or Lisa Bardo is my other account. But I love seeing what you guys have made. I, I want to see like what little p places you put on your little stickers. <laughs> or if you did like different um, words for your suitcase. So please do share. I would love to see it. And then finally, I have to do one last plug for the book. <laughs> um, 
I would love it if you guys would order a copy of Drawing Digital. I'm so excited about this release. It's like I said, two years in the making and it feels so crazy that um, that I get to tell you about it. And I, I think that you, if you like learning from me, I think you're really, really gonna like this book because it's, um, I don't know, like sometimes drawing drawing books and art books come come at it from a perspective of someone who's like, really really good and I you know I'm good I'm not saying I'm bad or anything but like the drawings sometimes they just feel so unattainable and you're like oh god I could never do that uh, like that looks very complicated that looks you know you just don't feel like you don't you can't see yourself doing it and I specifically made the projects in this book um achievable and I made them look like if you feel like you could do it um, so that was like one of my biggest goals in creating this book. So if you want to learn more about it, you can go to bardobrush.com slash book and pre-order your copy. And um, I hope to see you guys again really soon for another live tutorial. And like I said, I'm hopefully going to be making more YouTube videos and sharing those. So it's going to be fun. Lots of good stuff in the works for you guys. All right. Uh, until next time, I, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and weekend and happy art making. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.